attack killed those four brave Americans who are serving our country. Daniel Harper is the online editor of the Weekly Standard who has been delving into this and joins us now from Washington. So Daniel, what can we expect when the select committee opens its hearings? Well, we can expect a few things. One, later this week, Fox, special, Fox uh, and they'll have a special report, of course, with Brett Baer. I expect uh, a lot of new reporting and new information to come out of that. Of course, this new hearing, and then there will be a few new books that will come out as well. We can also expect uh, on the anniversary, the two-year anniversary of that dreadful day, to get more information, perhaps, and at least to be talking about Benghazi, what went on two years ago, and the, what the questions remain. Remember, there are three distinct things that we're looking into and that we're interested in here. What happened leading up to the attack? What happened during the attack? And what happened in the middle or after the attack? And what, how did the administration try to deal with the attack? So those are the things that we all are looking out for in these series of events that are going to come. And hopefully there will be a lot of new inf and exciting information. Well, as you know, is that the head of the, uh, the military in Africa, Carter Ham, said he was in the Pentagon within 15 minutes. He knew it was a terrorist attack. He met with the top officials. They right. went to the White House apparently telling the president it was a terrorist attack. So what new information do you think will be gleaned from this new committee hearing? Well, uh, Secretary Clinton supposedly uh, didn't read the warning from Cri Ambassador Chris Stevens asking for more security in Benghazi. He s sent out signals of distress, you know, months leading up to the Benghazi terror attack. Who responded? Who read those things? What happened? Why, why did we even have such a CIA presence in a place like Benghazi in the first place? Of course, in the middle of the attack, did Secretary Clinton do everything she could to help those Americans stranded in Benghazi? And did President Obama do everything that he could to help those Americans? Those questions remain, as well as, as you suggested, if those generals said that it's no question that the terrorist attack, how come Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama weren't, didn't come clean? How come they waited so many days in order to say that it was a terrorist attack? Well, they, you How know, they would they say that on this video? They would say they certainly did come clean at the time they thought it was, the, it was that uh, video. And we know, apparently, uh, through the testimony, that the president and Mrs. Clinton had a phone call, uh, at phone conversation at 10 p.m. that night after he had already, about 8 o'clock, talked to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on the telephone for, for some time. What details do we know about that 10 p.m. phone call, and how did that change things? Well, in Hillary's memoir, she actually suggests that she had left the State Department and she was at her home when she made that phone call. That's a big unexplored revelation. Why wasn't she at the State Department controlling the information, controlling the situation? Well, she could say she could do it at home. You know, she's the boss. She's got a telephone. Yeah, this is unheard of in State Department. I mean, I, I've heard of from State Department officials when there's a flood in, in Haiti or something, everybody comes in and they work together from from the control room, from the State Department. This is not what happened there. This is a unique situation. Why, why did they break down like this? Why did she decide to go home? Did she uh, decide that there was no hope in saving these people? Or what decisions were made? These are some of the questions I think uh, I know I'm interested in. I think many other people are interested in as well. Yeah, and you know, meanwhile, there's some questions today. We see this video of the uh, Islamic militants uh, of the dawn uh, of Libya taking our uh, former consulate or the CAA residential annex there, jumping to the pool, treating it like a frat house. We had evacuated that facility. So, Daniel, in a sense, what does it mean when the world, when the Islamist terrorists, when these organizations see this type of video? They know Benghazi. They know this. They know 1983, the bombing of the barracks in Beirut. And of course, they know the 1979 Tehran takeover of our embassy there. What type of message does this all send out to the world and to our enemies who would do us harm? It's not a good message at all. And one thing that you didn't mention, but I think is worth mentioning, is that we removed Gaddafi. We bombed Gaddafi, which was good, but then we just left the country to sort of explode. And it's a big, uh, I think, a metaphor for how the whole Middle East is right now. We have done a little bit here, a little bit there under the Obama administration, but then we've pulled back and the Middle East is exploding. What kind of Middle East can we expect? And is this the foreign policy of President Obama and Hillary Clinton? Are we seeing the results of it where our embassies and our, our residential uh, palaces or whatnot are being overrun by Obamists? Daniel Harper of the Weekly Standard, we thank you so much for joining us today about this. And certainly the world is waiting to hear what the president will do about ISIS. And we expect more on that later this week during the NATO Thanks, conference. Thank you. Or thank you. Oh, Eric, meantime, British Prime Minister David.